When an acid and a metal react, they produce a salt plus hydrogen. So the general equation we use is acid plus metal makes a salt plus hydrogen. Here are some example word equations. If we reacted hydrochloric acid and the metal sodium, we would produce the salt sodium chloride plus hydrogen gas. If we reacted sulfuric acid with the metal calcium, we would make the salt calcium sulfate plus hydrogen gas. If we reacted nitric acid plus potassium, we would make the salt potassium nitrate plus hydrogen gas. So as the general equation says, on each reaction we are producing hydrogen gas. And the thing that changes is the salt, because that is dependent upon the metal and the acid used. The salt will always start with the name of the metal that you've used. And the salt ending, chloride, sulphate and nitrate will depend on the acid that you've used. If you use hydrochloric acid, your salt ending will be a chloride. If you use sulfuric acid, your salt ending will be a sulphate. And if you use nitric acid, your salt ending will be a nitrate. When an acid reacts with a metal, you can see the hydrogen gas being released. So you will observe fizzing and you will see bubbles moving up through the acid. With a more reactive metal, you will see a more vigorous reaction. So you will see this happen a lot quicker and you will see more bubbles produced in a shorter amount of time. You can observe how different metals react with acid. For example, the first one could be lead reacting with acid, and then iron, and then zinc, and finally magnesium. And with your observations, you can put these metals in order of their reactivity. So we would have magnesium as the most reactive, followed by zinc, and then iron, and finally the lead, as the least reactive. Some metals do not react with dilute acids, so you won't see metals such as copper, silver or gold react in your school experiments. As we said, hydrogen gas is always produced in acid and metal reactions, and you can do a test to prove that it's hydrogen gas. You would place a boiling tube over the test tube to collect the hydrogen gas. You would then place a lit splint in the boiling tube and if you hear a squeaky pop, hydrogen is present. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at GCSErevisionMonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at ScienceSurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.